In today's video, we will be comparing the Raspberry Pi 4 Model B with the Raspberry Pi Model B and B+, and whether it's worth buying. That's coming up right after the intro. Every video I create, I believe in helping you create new technology that can be innovative and creative. The way I create my videos is by making a wide variety of basic IT videos that are easy to understand and will create a base for your future IT creations. My tutorials will include IoT devices, design, databases, websites, apps and so much more. Hello world, my name is Asali, meaning basic in the language Hasa. So in today's video we will learn all about the new features of the Raspberry Pi 4 compared to the third one, and whether the upgrade is worth it or not, and after this video I will be linking a tutorial on how to set up the Raspberry Pi 4 as the software of the previous Raspberry Pis are not compatible. Just for comparison I will include the Model B as well. First let's put them side by side and check the more visible hardware changes. As you may tell, the power supply is different. The power supply now happens with a USB-C and not the old micro USB, thank god for that. The power supply is 5 volts and requires at least a minimum of 2 ampere, however 3 would be perfect. Also, there has been an upgrade in the HDMI connectors. Now instead of one normal HDMI connector, they support two connectors, both which are micro HDMI connectors for 4K video, meaning the Raspberry Pi 4 supports up to 4K resolution, which is insane for a little computer of 35 euros. Firing up Minecraft just got even more interesting. Some other visible changes to the hardware are the Ethernet port and USB ports which have been switched up so now the Ethernet port is on the right side instead of left. What you also may have noticed is that two of the USB ports in the Raspberry Pi, in the Raspberry Pi 4 are blue meaning those two support USB 3.0 which is a big deal compared to the USB 2.0. Now let's start off with the features that haven't changed. All three come with 40 GPIO pins for all of your big projects you might have in mind. There are still four USB ports to connect multiple devices to, but not that you need any more of them. A microSD slot for your storage and operating system like usual, a jack connector for the studio, how about that, a CSI port for the Raspberry Pi camera, and a DSI port for the Raspberry Pi touchscreen. Now what does the Raspberry Pi 4 have more than its predecessors Raspberry Pi 3, Model B and B+. Well we already knew the most visible hardware changes like the two micro HDMI connectors and the USB Type-C connector. But other than that what else has changed? One of the biggest changes lays in the memory where you can now choose from 1 to 4 GB of SD RAM unlike the 1 GB with the Raspberry Pi 3, Model B and B+, that you're stuck with. The Bluetooth also got an update, now it's up to version 5 instead of 4.2, and both supporting BLE. If you want more info on BLE, watch the video in the upper right corner on screen now. The Ethernet and Wi-Fi support compared to the Pi 3 and B to the Pi 3 B Plus has not changed that much, but compared, compared to the regular Model B it has a lot. For the processor, however, it has gotten up to 3 times faster than its predecessor, which is a huge deal, but all has to be proven with a benchmark, which I will link in the upper right corner on screen now, or a link in the description down below will be added to be found. Now conclusion. Is it worth buying it? Well yeah sure, compared to the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B, it sure has gotten a lot of changes. But for those who already own a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B+, Plus, you may want to wait until the Pi 4 Model B Plus 2. Once you take a look at the benchmark which I linked in the description down below, you will start to notice that the biggest changes have been made to the LAN speed and USB speeds, which were needed, but other than that, compared to the Model B Plus, there isn't much else. If you don't have a Raspberry Pi 4 yet and would like one, then there should be a link to it in the description down below. Also, please consider checking out my Patreon page as well, that would be awesome. There I upload all of my code with in-depth explanation of each video I ever created on this channel. Link for that down below or on screen now. 
So that's it for today guys, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification so you won't miss out on the next video and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye world.